Now you're just somebody that I used to know. What's up, guys? How you doing? Nothing is broken. I was, I was, I was waiting for it. I was ah, waiting for something to be broken. Yeah, nothing is broken. And then I'd be like, your mics are just screaming in a high-pitched voice. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for that. Uh, so what's up, everyone? It's episode number 29 of Frag Logic. I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Skyless. Colin, what's up? How you doing? Too much. Uh, looking forward to playing some Splinter Cell when we're done. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right after we're done. Uh, right before we actually started, I was playing some Payday 2, which is uh, one of the games that uh, just came out, I think, Friday? It's a weird mm. release date. I want to say Thursday or Friday of last week. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've been playing that. Thought it was pretty fun. Played with some people from work, actually. So um, we're robbing banks together now. Making, <laughs> making games math. And, making games and robbing <laughs> banks. Making math. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me up far, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, you said you're playing Splinter Cell. How is that? Yeah, I picked it up last night at midnight, and uh, we played for, I think, three hours. Uh, myself, uh, Phobos, and Wraith, also in ZYN, uh, just stomping everybody. So, yeah. But it's a lot of fun. I was actually surprised at the 4v4 mode. Like, we kind of ragged on the 4v4 mode a bit, but uh, I feel kind of bad, because it's not too bad. Okay. Um, but also, people haven't unlocked it yet, so who knows what wait, kind of lame combos there are. You have to unlock it? Uh, no, you have it on. You have it unlocked, but you have to unlock your own gear and shit. So oh, okay. some okay. some of the gay combos probably haven't been surfaced I gotcha. yet. I gotcha. All right. Um, so I'm gonna get right into it. I was gonna do weekend events, but there wasn't really too much happening. I watched some Counter Strike uh, Global Offensive uh, tournament. Uh, it was ESEA season 14 finals was between NIP and uh, Complexity. And uh, NIP basically whooped them. It wasn't. I mean, I mean, they they started to mount a comeback and then they just shut them down. I've been following that scene kind of passively. It seems like they've just been stomping everything. NIP. Or it's not even fun. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the the weird thing is that I I didn't really recognize too many of the players. Like I was trying to look through. I mean, maybe they've changed their names. Uh, maybe I just haven't been following the scene long enough to see who's in. I think and who's like. Out. 80% of the 1.6 scene, like, just straight up retired uh, when people had to transition over to Go. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we, have, we haven't really talked about Counter-Strike too much on the show, but that was one of the things that, uh, tournaments that were this, this weekend for esports, and there was also a TF2 tournament. Uh, this ESCA Season 14 final, I don't know what a, the actual name of the event was, but that was held in Dallas. Uh, so that was, yeah, that was right, right around us. So... Um, is that where is it Levine that runs that yes is he from Dallas I think so okay because that would make sense so, to why that event is there as opposed to I don't, I don't know anywhere else in the world um, I know they ran it in Canada one year and it was a mess <laughs> so Gamescom lots lots of news yeah coming at us at strange times of the day <laughs> yes both, i think both of us were at work just like yeah titanfall or bf4 yeah. or whatever. i was i was trying to be productive but at the same time like i kept on opening up uh like videos in my second monitor and like full screen so i could see it and uh working in a game studio it's like i open that up and it's just like a magnet and like people walking by will turn around and then you have a small discussion around it and completely disrupt work for a good five to ten minutes while you look at this video yep that's how it was with Titanfall, especially. Exactly what happened at, <laughs> at work for me, too. <laughs> for Titanfall, specifically. Because that was oh, yeah. all like, I went, I always go nuts if I'm excited about something and I'm watching. I'm like, oh, my God. And I'll be talking to everybody around me like, you guys got to watch such and such. And then everybody's like, okay, we're dropping everything we're doing and we're going to watch. <laughs> so it's, it's And usually, uh, like, matter. people who work in the game industry are pretty uh, cynical, I think you could say. Uh, yeah. in terms of like other games and like what they show it's like oh that's so cliche you know that kind of thing I haven't heard one bad thing about Titanfall like it's like the one game where everyone's like oh shit that looks fun yeah and I'm getting a pretty much the same vibe and I don't know if you saw my tweet but that was, I think it was earlier today yeah it was right before my uh, or right during my morning meeting because I saw it and then I went to a morning meeting but I was like I sent out a tweet saying something like who's not 
wait, we're all in agreement that everyone's on the Titanfall bandwagon. And I was like, something like, uh, I just need all the haters to speak up right now. And then there was a couple people that are like, I don't know enough about the game or I haven't seen anything on it. Um, so they're kind of like really hesitant. But for the most part, I, it just seems like everybody's in love with the game. That movement. <laughs> <laughs> The movement is just so nasty. That's exactly what it is, dude. Like Double in the video from today, he does that thing where it's like uh, jumps off a wall, jumps over to another wall, and then somehow fucking wraps around the wall while he's in midair and then jumps up. Yes. And I was like, okay, so it's wall jumping, wall jumping. We've seen this a bit. Then when he did that, I was like, hold on a second. I actually rewound and was like, what the fuck did he do? Because he just like magically stops his momentum and like turns around and then jumps up. <clears throat> I was pretty. Uh, it's like, oh, that's sick. Yeah. That's that's all I kept thinking about. It was like, can you imagine some of the fights that are going to be going on? And what what really and you know I'm I'm kind of still a little concerned about the popcorn AI and how this whole yeah. multiplayer environment is going to work out. But in the trailer, it was like a cinematic before it actually started. You know what I mean? Because they were talking. Yeah. The guy was drunk and they were lowering him down into the uh, whatever that was. I don't know what that was. Like I think they were going to the sewers to escape. Okay, it was like a sewer. you were buying time for them. Okay. So, uh, that whole scene was like, what is this? that looked very single-player-ish. And then when you got into the environment, it was like this multiplayer. <clears throat> so, it seems like they're going to do well, a really nice job. Well, that's what they're doing. Job. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like they're going to do a really nice job to make that a seamless environment. But I'm just concerned about <clears throat> how it's going to play out on a PvP standpoint of, when am I going to actually encounter a player from the opposing team? Are they playing for the side you're fighting for, or are they doing another storyline? It's like, how is that going to kind of work itself out? I think it's just instance missions. So, like, they would probably get a similar thing where it's like, hey, the enemy has an ace pilot, but they're trying to escape, blah, 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 and then they give the mission briefing, and then you would go into the game. So it's kind of like, it's just a normal game mode, but then they're wrapping it around a story layer. Um, and then I assume each side would have a different story for that. Right. As far as why they're fighting that fight. Right. Um, obviously, it could get old when you're helping the drunk guy escape for the 60th Six, time. Exactly. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, a funny thing is I actually had the same kind of thought process as you about how it's going to work out. But um, the, the thing that kind of I was concerned with was if everyone is finished with this mission, does that just not get played anymore? You know what I mean? It's like... If, no, it's if just a hopper thing. Like, you just search... Um, from what we understand, it's just like, say we get uh, rooftops execution, then it would play out the storyline for rooftop execution every time. Oh god, yeah, that that would the way you put that that would get very monotonous and boring. See, I thought it would be like a progressive story, so you would be you play the first mission, everyone is instant. No, and then, I don't think so. Yeah, that's gonna be. We're talking about Titanfall, that one. Yeah, we're actually talking about uh, Titanfall right now, which I guess I should put in the kind of a segue yeah. for this make this a little bit better games come and then we'll go uh titanfall you thought the source engine showed in the trailer in the sense of uh in a negative way uh follow russia because i was surprised we were watching it at work and uh someone's like yeah did you guys know this is made in source engine and like uh, most people understand the source engine to be pretty shitty in terms of graphical fidelity because it's pretty old um so everyone was like, "Really? That's source?" You know. Yeah. So like, it was kind of the opposite thing from the guys at work. I, I actually I have the same type of feeling. Like uh, I I will say I wasn't as blown away. I think the other game we were really talking about was Division. That from a graphical standpoint, next to yeah. Titanfall, yeah, maybe you can see the age there. But in terms of next gen play for what we're going to see or what we've already seen with the PC so far and what this is going to show, I. I can't really say I was disappointed with with what I saw. Um, maybe the detail on the mechs. It's all gonna be moving so fast, though. Like, to me, it's the environment structure and like the uh, general overall theme, which uh, does it for me. Like, they had the uh, in that particular gameplay, there was like ships floating like right next to the play space, kind of in the yeah. background. And uh, I thought it was a nice detail. And oh. Looks next gen to me. <laughs> uh, I would I would agree. Um, Especially if they can get the source spectating stuff like Dota has. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. But then then we talking about spectating, 
And uh, Lady Insanity actually had a tweet where she was saying it. Ho- she hopes it comes with esports features. Yeah. And I don't really think Respawn is concerned with esports. I I don't know. I I just feel like the game right now doesn't seem like it's for esports. And I'm I'm still hyped for the game because it's something different. But I don't know if it's going to be like a competitive title. So that's so always like the last thing we get information on, right? With AAA yeah. games. Yeah. I, unless it's Shoot Mania. I mean, usually spectator features are like stretch goals uh, in terms of if we're ahead of schedule and we'll try and get this in. Right. Uh, and I think it's becoming easier to do it. Source in particular has okay. Uh, I think the way that the source netcode is set up, from what I understand, makes it easier, which is how they did it in Dota. So here's here's my question to you is, what do you think, or where do you think if this goes competitive, um, it's going to go for, is it going to be PC, or do you think Microsoft EA is going to throw a bunch of money bes- uh, behind this on, on the Xbox One? Seems like from a marketing standpoint, they're pushing the Xbox uh, more so than anything else. Right. Uh, in pretty much every regards, like, PC's almost never going to be the primary platform for marketing. Uh, just because if you market on Xbox, then you're probably going to get some support from Xbox and marketing. Right. Um, same thing on Sony's end. Like, if you're releasing multi-plat, I think that it's going to be really difficult for PC to be the platform for competitive. Um, and probably also, like, uh, it's difficult for the community even to be largest on PC, I think, uh, just because of the marketing. I, I don't... Although with next gen, I don't know, people don't have the consoles. There's not a big install base like there is currently. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, we're, if we're talking first year installment base, then PC will probably be bigger for a longer period of time. And by the time Xbox catches up, there there may be what is the newness? Titanfall Two is what we're probably going to be talking about at that point in time. So, I I mean I'm leaning towards a PC buy. I think that's what we kind of discussed previously on the show. Um, we were talking heavy Titanfall discussion, but I, I'm i really like, uh, I think I might just get it on PC versus waiting to see what's going to happen on Xbox One. And if maybe some tournament stuff happens to uh, you know find its way on Xbox One, which is highly likely, I think, given that Microsoft will want to publicize this and promote it quite a bit, then I'll probably make the jump over to, to Xbox One. And I also think the PC community will be ahead in terms of map awareness, strategies, and all that stuff, like we typically see on a lot of other games that are PC and console. It's hard to say, because as an eSport game, it's going to have the battlefield issue, right? Where it's large-scale combat, but you can't really... Uh... You can't really scale down, right. Yeah, so I mean, like, if you, as you scale down, you add popcorn AI uh, in, in droves. And is that really competitive? I, I don't know. Maybe it can be. I don't know. Um, you know, the other thing I, I kind of want to mention with this is, uh, did you see that when the Titan dropped, they had a shield around it this time? And previously when it dropped, there was... Uh, was it a shield, it, though? I couldn't I, tell. It looked like a shield or a force field, and my thinking was, do they are they making it like that so if you call it down, then you're the only person that can hop in it? Or I think that might be team? it. Well, how, if you see a, a Titan drop and you're on the opposing team and you want to blow it up before the guy gets into it, what is your play there? I don't, I'm not even sure it's a shield. I thought, personally, the impression I got was that it was like, okay, you dropped it in, come anywhere inside this circle and you'll automatically get inside of it. That's what I interpreted it. He says, uh, He-Man D-Man says it has, said shield above it, so it's not. But yeah, I imagine it only lasts a short period of time, so you have time to hop in. I don't know. Uh... The other thing, yes, the other gameplay there uh, that I thought was interesting is that he hopped on another mech, and he was shooting on the mech on the back of the mech. He was riding it. His. He was riding that mech during the escape. Yeah. So what you what you think about that? I think it's one of those things no one's going to end up using. Uh, the movement is so insane. How are you going to get? Why are you going to get out of mech? The mech seemed like it was moving that, slower, right? Yeah, I think it might have been moving slower. I mean, it's probably pretty close. And in the end, like, the mechs are just giant targets for explosive fire, right? right. You know, if you're sitting on the mech and you're getting hit by explosives, the mech can take it. You can't. <laughs> but it's still pretty awesome. Yeah. I, you know, the, the way it was sequenced, uh, choreographed, I mean, this is a really awesome 
I really like what Respawn is doing with their their trailer so far. The choreography in the multiplayer uh, arena. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really good. Like probably some of the best I've ever seen from a the game. The only one that was bad was the guy standing on the ledge and like waiting two seconds for the guy to get over there so he could punch him off the building and go ah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like ah, oh, that was clearly set up. Um, <laughs> but I, I think from a from a competitive standpoint, all of us are, and this is what they choreograph really well was the platforming in this, which you mentioned in the beginning, is yeah. so, it looks so good and so fluid that I just feel like there's going to be this huge skill gap in this game and people are going to be... be huge. It's going to be a gigantic skill people gap. People are going to be so upset. It's going to be because awesome. Because they're going to get thrown into the fire with a bunch of people that have been waiting for a game like this. And they're going to be thinking it's Call of Duty or Battlefield or something fucking easy. I'm not saying Battlefield is easy. Just pop, shoot, pop, shoot, pop, shoot. And they're going to get their ass it's rocked. It's all right, though. They'll kill the, uh, the, the, they'll kill the popcorn. They're going to get their ass They'll be chewing rocked. through the popcorn. Listen, there's going to be some players that are ripping through popcorn, players, mechs, everything on the battle. People are going to get destroyed. I'm looking forward to going like 70 and 0. Just because there's popcorn in there with it, Like I, I think I can drop a 70. I, I, I'm just going to. I, I, that's that's what has me salivating so much about this game because it's not the norm. Like there's, there, I mean, it looks like it has elements in it that are saying, "I want a skilled player to sit down and play this too, and try like... to master this game." And Respawn isn't necessarily saying that, but that's what they've kind of portrayed in all of their their videos so far with the platforming. It's just like, oh my god, this is this is heaven. It's good for the industry. <laughs> I think. Yeah. In order to get away from that, like. Just sit there and just there aim. Like let me get, let me like, behind cover. And then you're going to sprint got... over to another building, and then you'll sit there and aim some more. Like <laughs> In this case, it's like, all right, I'm going to run, I'm going to jump all over these walls, I'm going to stop for a second or two, shoot, and then I'm going to jump off more walls. Like, That's fun. Like, Even if you don't get any kills, and that's what I was talking with some of the guys at work about, is it's like, even if you don't get any kills, you can have fun just moving around that environment. Like, yeah. If the maps are built well and they support it, then you can have fun just moving around. And then you get your mech every now and then and get a few kills. Like... So, can I tell you what game type I'm the most excited for? CTF. CTF, you knew it. <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> I am so excited for Capture the Flag on this game. That'd be really nasty, man. And then you have uh, like the whole, do you use your mechs on defense or offense? Uh, and then you have the kind of desperation pushes where the mechs all go up, and then you have no one in your back lines. Re and then like, on. you grab it, and then the mechs are defending, and you're just like juking through all the buildings. Just ah, ah, Shots ah. flying over your head. And then your mech comes in, you jump on and hitch a ride. <laughs> <laughs> then the mech's just backing up, like using itself as a meat shield so you can get to the next building. Then you hop off, you go jumping through the alleyways again. Colin, you, listen, I want to play. I, I just want to play. Two minds, man. Think of like I'm talking <laughs> Listen, I'm so. Respawn is doing it right right now. Like. I am so impressed by what they've shown so far. And I would have been a cynic, too, because I was not impressed with Call of Duty series, to be honest. So, like, Call, even Call of Duty 4, I was like, eh, it's an okay game. Uh, but I was never really big into it. So, uh, like I said, I, would, I wouldn't have predicted it from Respawn. But I think they might actually be the ones that are doing the most to push skill gap and, uh, I don't know, just fun fucking gameplay. Like, right. ignoring the current existing tropes. Uh, the industry has. All right. Except, except they have perks, and it sort of seems like they have like perks and loadout type shit. It, they do. If they remove that. <laughs> I'm, I'm asking too much. <laughs> yeah, you are. You can't get away with that. Battlefield Four. So we'll we'll hop into one since I, I and I don't mean to be a critic about Battlefield Four, but that's just like the <coughs> arena shooter coming out of me where I'm tired of everyone sitting there aiming down sights, thinking that oh I'm so good. And it's like, dude, you, you, have you played any game that requires you to actually be mobile um, and, and aim at the same time? So that's, that's kind of what has me so hype for, for Titanfall. But on to Battlefield 4, um, you know, first off, the beta is coming in October. Um, and I think that, you know, I think the last beta that came out, we had to buy Medal, Medal of Honor. They made you buy shittiness in order to get the beta for what you really wanted to play. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the case with this, but they haven't released any details on that actually how you get into the beta. 
And so it's two weeks before the game comes out. Right. A true beta. Yeah. It was, it, it, didn't we rag on this earlier in the year? They, they did it last time. They did it last time. Like, it was like, what, three weeks before? And the beta was completely broken. They're like, oh, don't worry. We already fixed most of those bugs for the full game. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, you can't even react on this. Like, any of the issues we come up with can't possibly be fixed initially. We're going to have to wait a month for the fixes for that stuff. This is exactly the same thing we were talking about. I want to say that was in February. It was one of the first shows that we did talking about betas. This is the exact same shit where they're releasing a beta, just like you said, two weeks before. And if we find any issues with it, they're more matter. likely not going to be resolved on launch. Yeah, It's basically a demo. So why don't they just fucking label it as a demo? You know, like, even their internal team considered the beta build, like, their E3 build, probably. Like, that was probably their beta build. Exactly. And so, if you're in the general public right now, if you're if you're a regular gamer, consumer, you are being fooled. This is a demo. This is not a beta, right? I mean, I know the Xbox One is supposed to have a better turnaround, but on launch, you're going to be playing about the same game. Yeah. Um, so if there's any major issues with this, and, and, and again, we got to bring up Battlefield 3 because there was a ton of shit where they were like, this is our beta, guys. And we're like, okay, well, this, 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 this is wrong. Your matchmaking is completely broken. It was completely <laughs> broken. And then when the game came out, they didn't fix it for... It was a good month, yeah. Month, three weeks, four weeks. And it was, it was like, mm, it was just really disappointing. So if the same shit happens on this, new hardware new process for how things are going to go through certification, new way to, to uh, upload your builds and get things fixed. Like, we could be looking at a serious issue when the game is released uh, for turnaround time. So, despite being happy about the beta coming out and being able to play the game two weeks early, I'm really cautious about how this is going to play out if there are any glaring issues with the game. Like, because I, I just think a lot of people don't understand that a beta is not a beta when it's this close uh, around the time of the game. A beta is Gears of War three six months before the game. Halo Reach too. Or Halo Reach. A pretty good one. Yeah, the, and I think Halo actually did one before that too on another game. Uh, I know the Halo Reach one was really early. Yeah. So I mean, this isn't a beta. This is a demo, uh, but it is going to come out. They haven't deaten released any details other than saying it's going to be available in October. Um, I will say with the Levolution, did you watch the Levolution trailer that was released? I think that was the old one. Did you watch the... It was the water one, which was this one, or which was just released. I can't did you remember. See the, I did watched you see all, I the C video? Okay. It was like something C, and at the end it had the China map Ch yeah. uh, in the woods and stuff. Yep. I gotta so, say, like, the sea physics and stuff, look incredible like the uh storm coming and the waves ramp up and then uh like it's splashing up and in getting into the uh, land we haven't seen a submarine though no we haven't seen a submarine which has me a little worried a little bit worried about the game I but really like it seems like probably they're approaching like perfection of the arcade military sim you know what i mean like yeah, they are uh, there's only so much more you can add beyond just getting bigger in scale uh it's like, if you're into that kind of thing, I don't see how you can really find that much fault in Battlefield. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, for exactly what you said, military simulation, basically... Arcade. Arcade, sim arcade, arcade simulation. simulation. Yeah, is, so it's like simulation. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's probably the closest that you're going to get to having a large-scale battle with destructible environments that actually change the landscape... Um, and the funniest thing, and, and then again, I'm, I'm going to mention the Levolution thing. And if you guys don't know that term, is uh, basically there are destructible environments. They're calling it Levolution. Levolution. Because, because as you destroy the environments, it's so destructible now that it's supposed to change the level of the game. So it's Levolution. Uh, I, you Which know, I like, think is kind of bullshit because the first map they showed was the Skyscraper. And it was literally just like, sky raper, Skyscraper is up. Skyscraper is down. At least in this one, like I thought, this is a better example of that because the water starts getting crazy high waves, uh, and then they showed like a ship crashing onto the beach. Yeah. Uh, so I thought this was a better example than the skyscraper falling. Yeah. Uh, but still, it's like small adjustments, kind of like avalanche and gears, where yeah, it's just yeah. like uh, well, the other something thing happens. That, with the uh, the skyscraper falling that they showed was. Uh, that same footage, they had the tank over, over ground and they were underground and they had two pillars or three pillars, I can't remember, 
and they shot the pillars out while the tank was overhead and the tank fell down in there. So, um, you know, if the environments are like that everywhere, then it's definitely a major improvement. Yeah, if they have that all over the place, then definitely. Over Battlefield 3, but I, you know, I, I just hate when they show it like that because it's like they only show these key points where that yeah, happens. Yeah, they're showing the set pieces, right? So uh, it, it's really. Mm, I, I really but want still, it to be like, Levolution, but still, yeah. I mean, you mentioned the engine seems insane. The engine yeah. seems insane. Yeah, it's it's that's a next gen, that's a next gen engine for sure. Yeah, like hands down, that is that. What is it? Frostbite that's a, three. That's a that's a Star Wars Battlefront engine. <laughs> Which we didn't hear any news on that. Were, were you wanting? Well, no. Uh, they, they basically just said they were going to start development. It's not going to be ready till like twenty fifteen. I, I think. I it's still want to hear. Listen, I want to hear. You want to see like? <laughs> I want to see concept art right now for that game. <laughs> I want to see uh, lightsabers and uh, the walkers, and I want to see. Uh, You're not going to hear anything for like a year. Fighters. Come it's gonna be like a year at least. Yeah, I agree. I think Frostbite Three is probably the best engine on the market. And it's not even really on the market. It's it's theirs. They they should <laughs> put it out there to to. Oh it man, they, I don't know. Killing. They get some competition though. Like right now, I'm not sure anyone can even compete with that. Like with uh, the shit what, they're doing in battle in the battlefield. What was uh, Red Faction using? Uh, uh, it's in house. Who was that? It's an in house engine. In house engine. They had yeah. something very similar on um, the destructible environments. They did terrain deformation more so than, like, the environments were more, like, uh, really rigid. Like, if these three out of the four pillars are knocked down, then we'll knock down the building kind of thing. Yeah. So I mean, it, it wasn't as good as, like, Battlefield I is. I mean, they, if, if anybody wanted to scoop up and try to compete, I think that would be the studio you want to get tech from. Uh, from Volition? Is that who did it? Volition? Yeah, I can't remember what their engine's called. Wait, is Volition who's Volition scooped up by now? Volition does Saints Row. Uh, they're with they were with THQ. I don't I don't think they're with anyone right now. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, they're with uh, <laughs> Cock Media, Coke Media. <laughs> uh, going back a few episodes on that. <laughs> Cock Media. <laughs> their engine's called Geo Mod. Geo Mod. Ah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> there we go. It was originally called Red, uh, Red Engine. That's what I remembered as. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that is Battlefield 4. I mean, I, there's not really too much I, 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 I can really elaborate on other than saying that it looks I'm great. excited for the game. It looks awesome. But. It looks, it looks next gen. But, yeah, it's like. There's it's not doing anything new. Like, it's, it's Battlefield it's, it's Battlefield three and a half, you know, like it's it's expanding on what we're already used to with the with the genre, right? Yeah, I mean they basically just built on their existing stuff, so, uh, which is fine because, like I said, I feel like as a military simulation arcade game, it's right probably as good as it can. Yeah, like realistically, you can add more destruction, but they've already like pretty much maxed out on destruction. I'm they even have fucking trees swaying in the wind now. That's why I said they either, you know, all they, they can is, dynamically make the trees sway in the wind and change the shadows and everything. Like, what more can you do? They need submarines. That's it. Uh, submarines is the missing feature, and oh, nukes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but what would that do to the city? That would levolution everything. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the game. It's just like a uh, <laughs> Call of Duty, but they actually drop the nuke and you get to see the effects of a nuclear fallout. Yeah. And it takes like 30 minutes for the game to end. You have to sit there and watch, <laughs> watch the effects of the nuke. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and switch this up. I'll try to get the chat maybe a little bit and answer questions if you guys uh, have any. But uh, I do want to hit Call of Duty Ghost. I don't want to talk about it too long, kind of like Battlefield. Uh, but the information here is that they're going to have dedicated servers on Xbox One. Not surprised, but uh, you know the Call of Duty community has been clamoring. I mean clamoring for dedicated servers for a really long time. Uh, and even when all these guys get these dedicated servers, I'm going to uh, really enjoy seeing how 
pissed off people are at their connections and stuff. So, <laughs> you, you know, so it's one of those things where, you know, we talked about dedicated servers before and people are all like... I'm just waiting for why can't I stream? Like, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> when, you put, when you put the capability of streaming and you advertise the ability to stream in front of everyone, then like... Okay, so all you have to do is push this button and you'll stream to Twitch. <laughs> it's like, why am I lagging so bad? <laughs> why does my stream look like shit? <laughs> I want dedicated servers. Why am I lagging so bad? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Just waiting for it. Yeah, so, I, I'm to be honest, I, I watched some Call of Duty stuff and... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to hate on the game. It's the biggest game in the world for shooters. Uh, I. It's Call of Duty. Like, I don't care what they what title they change it, what they do to to add new stuff to it. It is the same game. One thing I'll say: the uh, did you see, you see the Clan Wars stuff they're talking about? I thought yeah. that was one the one cool and somewhat different feature. No. How is it any different than leagues? There's an actual map. There's a meta map, and then it's grouping you in smaller groups with other clans and you're competing against them rather than against everybody that's what I'm saying How's it, it, that's multi-team which is in Black Ops with League I don't think it's multi-team though it's just straight up like your performance versus other clans to say I thought it was the one cool thing uh, from what they showed it's cooler than the fucking dogs following people around just saying Terrible. But yeah, I'm in I mean, like, we don't talk about Call of Duty much on this show, and neither of us is really that excited about Call of Duty ever. Yeah. I so mean, it's like, I, we, I feel bad because we don't talk about it at all, we but at the same time, it's like, what's there to talk about, right? We talk, we talk about their, the esports events. We talk yeah, about we did. Those. We talked about COD Championships. We talked about some of the events. Well, here, that been speaking of that, uh, there was no spectator uh, features when they were showing everything. Like, the COD TV was gone. That's because Treyarch knows what they're doing, and Infinity Ward fucks it up. I mean, is that... I, that's not Infinity Ward anymore. Do you think they'll have land support? Do you think they'll be able to run land? Uh, listen. I don't think it's well, been confirmed either way. Either way, I, I think that the competitive community just needs to set Call of Duty Ghosts aside. They can't, for, though. They no, cannot, no, because MLG no, said that it's their to. game. They have to. MLG said Call of Duty Ghosts, 2014 listen, exclusive console shooter. Listen, if you're watching this... And you are in the Call of Duty community, fucking rally like the Smash community, rally like the Street Fighter community, rally like the all the other communities, rally like the Counter Strike community, and you stay your ass on on Black Ops 2 because Treyarch knows what the fuck they're doing. Infinity Ward, no, they don't. They have no idea what they're doing. They can't though. Like they have to, they have to make MLG see the error of their ways, and then turn down all that Activision money. It's not gonna happen. They listen. They gotta rally. They need Hastro. Why didn't they just call him in again? They didn't want to get Hastro's feedback. They didn't want to get Fwiz's feedback. Fwiz He's too old. old. He's too old. What, is that? what do you What do you mean? <laughs> okay, sit down, old man. That's last last week. Okay, I got you. I got you. They didn't call. They didn't call him in. They didn't call Fwiz in. Fwiz actually tweeted at one of the the producers, I think, from Infinity Ward, saying, "Listen, you guys even haven't fucking talked to us." You haven't said a goddamn word to us. And the guy's like, oh, d d don't worry. We're going to have stuff. Nothing. When Nothing was that? Because Wiz was on stage doing the demonstration. No, I don't care. I, I don't care if he was on stage doing the demo. Maybe they called him Wiz and he was like, look at my bank account. <laughs> I'm the one playing. Just no, watching me play. Fwiz would be like, I got the I'm the one voice. commentating. I yeah, there you go. Voice. <laughs> I'm the one commentating. Y'all ain't commentating. I got You're the just listening. Voice. You're just listening, listening to me commentate. <laughs> Y'all listening to me. Look at my bank account. Oh, Activision man. paying me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if he tweeted those things, I didn't see the tweets, but if he tweeted those things and took the money to go do the presentation, i just saying. That is that is pretty scummy. If, I didn't say he did the presentation. I wasn't really paying attention to him actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, it was him and uh, Benson. See, I, I just watch gameplay stuff, so yeah. I didn't even know. So if he did that, I'm I'm absolutely hoping that he's been 
involved with that. But the tweet I saw was between him and one of the producers at, I think, Infinity Ward saying they did not at all, at all, uh, contact anyone from the competitive community. And I, I think even Optic Nate Shot or someone from Optic, I can't remember who it is, I think it's Nate Shot, posted a video on his YouTube channel saying nobody has talked to us about competitive Call of Duty Ghosts. I think they're worried, dude. And as they write, doesn't matter though, because they can just throw money at MLG, and then if MLG runs Ghost, then the community has a brutal time deciding what to do because MLG has them by the balls with the game battle shit. Just saying. They need to just rally, rally the troops. All you got to do is get optic envy. Complexity. You can't though, because look, if you pass on the MLG stuff and then you pass on. Uh, the world championships that are going to be for Call of Duty each year. Like, if you pass on those two tournaments, that's 99% of the prize money. No one's going to do that. All you have to do is go to COD Champs. You practice for COD Champs, and then you say, we're done for this with this game, we're going back on, on Black Ops, and then you do your normal stuff. And there's no way anyone would do that. Because if you're investing the time to play in COD Champs, you might as well play MLG. Alright, so what... Here's and you probably team. lose a COD Champs to whatever team is playing MLG because that's how it usually goes. What system are they going to play on? There's another dilemma. Xbox. I mean, Xbox One or Xbox 360? I think it's Xbox One. I'm not sure. I think they announced it, though. Everyone saying Xbox One in chat? That's what you guys think? Well, every one person. Yeah, there you go. Two people. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's nothing they can do. Like, the money is thrown at ghosts. They have to follow the money. Otherwise, they make shit, and other people take their money, because it's not like everyone's going to go, you know what I mean? Like, they have enough teams in that community that people can go. I don't think fucking Activision even knows who the top teams are beyond, like, three of them. Like, I think that they wouldn't know the difference if eight different teams showed up. That's true. They just hand out their checks. That's true. Hell, you saw how they produced the COD Champs. It wasn't even, like, that big of an event, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like Dota, where they had crazy promotion shit. It was just like... Yeah, we had a big tournament at the end of the week. Then we gave out big. We gave a big check. Here's a picture of the guys with their check. The end. Like that was they the last kind of champs. In, they still pulled in a ton of viewers. I mean, it had some pretty. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't like they were using it as like their main marketing thing. Not True. like uh, other leagues that actually care about their games do. True. Just saying. Right. Just saying. Well, just saying. I mean, fair fair argument. Fair argument. Just saying. I, I just want the community to rally behind the developer that's actually doing the right thing. Yeah, they should. But uh, I, there's just no way they can. Like, there's just no way, unless MLG is the one that stands up for them, which is what needs to happen. But MLG is going to act in their best financial interest, right? Always. Always. Yeah. Unless it's 2002 and Sunny's just starting out. Yeah. But it's not. It's not 2002 anymore. Uh, let me see here. PS4 release date. November 15th. November 29th for Europe. They have to wait two weeks. Uh, so I think the only thing that, uh, this is a couple things, I'm going to just label this as PlayStation 4. So the release date, November 15th, this is two weeks before uh, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand get it. Uh, do you think that is what they are trying to go for? Like, you know, I talked about this, usually... Ideally, what they they want to go for, I should say, because typically we we see like a three four day discrepancy between releases, and this is two weeks. I think that's how consoles were last time around too, if I remember right. I mean, it's been a while, uh, but I'm pretty sure. Two thousand six, yeah, seven eight years ago. Five. Oh, I was saying, yeah, it was oh five. I think it was oh five. I don't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure, and I'm so. If we're American. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Europe? Oh, who cares? I'm not. I'm not in Europe. It's <laughs> all that nine, remi- <laughs> nine years ago. You know, it's like. Well, what? When is they didn't announce Japan's uh, release date? What yeah, I'm not sure. Was, uh, I mean, like, I, ideally, I imagine their releases would all be at the same time, but I think it's just a logistic thing. And I obviously don't know anything about global logistics for a console launch, so I'm not even going to try to uh, <laughs> speculate I, as to what's happening there. I've been trying to wrap my head around it since I found out earlier today. It's like, well, why would they do two week span when I, I just feel like maybe it's just games that are typically like four or five days, but two weeks? 
dude, everybody's streaming this that uh, in this seven. My segue, right? Everybody that's streaming PlayStation Four games. They're gonna get all the viewers because all all the people from Europe, Australia, New Zealand, everybody else <laughs> won't have it. They're gonna be like, man, I wanna, I wanna see this PlayStation Four game. All I gotta say is, doesn't matter. Get mine first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so to our European friends. <laughs> yeah, I, I mentioned the stream, and uh, is it any surprise? Are you at all surprised that they decided to? Uh, they haven't officially dropped you stream, but they added. They added Twitch. Um, from what it sounds like, it sounds like it was the plan all along. Uh, the Twitch guys are saying that it was nice to finally be able to announce it. So I wonder, I wonder how long it's been in the works. I, mean, I don't know. It had to be like recent. That was all Ustream had. <laughs> I mean, that was literally all Ustream had. Aside from like hosting the occasional presidential uh, State of the Union online. Ustream randomly gets rappers and like just rappers really and and people that they're probably speak. spending more money than they get on that though yeah, I, they're probably I, paying each of those rappers I, I, <laughs> I saw Lil Wayne had a stream on Ustream <laughs> he's sitting there smoking and had a bunch of dudes around him and they were just in the studio or something I was just like man okay. you can't do that on Twitch then I, then I went to go on uh, non-game uh, content another stream and it was uh, uh, Cats and there was a lots and lots of people watching cats. It's the it's a twenty four hour live stream. It's a, it's actually I, I know the story. It's actually a guy who uh, like uh, gives a house to like litters and then lets them grow up and then sells them. Um, so he, like basically is like a, mi a halfway house for cats. And at some point he decided to start streaming it. So he has like a twenty four hour live cam on the cats. And there's thousands of people watching. It's, it's pretty riveting. They all they do is just sit there. I can like, attest to watching for several hours once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so did I. Shamefully, so did I. <laughs> He's like, cats... man, this is crazy. This guy's watching. Everyone, all these people are watching cats. Isn't that crazy? These people are watching cats. <laughs> like, yeah, I watch the cats too. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> but all they do is just sit there and they like sleep, and that's it. Yeah, they do cat things, which is mostly sleeping. So yeah, the Twitch Twitch announcement wasn't surprising considering Ustream has nothing gamer related on it, uh, and Twitch is everything gaming, uh, at, at least for live gaming uh, on, on the internet right now. So I mean, it just made sense, and I think this is one of the things that was a big time selling point for me with Xbox, Xbox. One, and now it's not even something that is exclusive. So I mean, I wasn't. I don't think I was necessarily hoping that it was exclusive for Xbox One, but after PlayStation 4 announced the Ustream, I was like, why the hell would I want to stream on Ustream <laughs> when Twitch has been doing gaming for three years now? Yeah. So, i just blown away by that. What I wonder is if, because uh, like all the Gaikai stuff they showed had Ustream pretty heavily embedded in there. So I'm wondering if Ustream's still going to be like the only way to do things through the Gaikai stuff, uh, and then Twitch will be like its own app or client or something. I don't know. I mean, they, they did say you just push the share button. Share and then button. You can, and so I mean, I guess that's integrated. Uh, but it's still kind of weird because that Gaikai stuff was pretty heavily uh, focused around the Ustream stuff. Yeah. Um, the other thing with Twitch is there's no built-in camera functionality with PlayStation 4 that we know of. So I'm kind of wondering if you want to do picture in picture, what type of tools you're going to have at your disposal to kind of get that working. Because it's, I mean, it just sounds like right now that we don't know enough information, but it seems like PlayStation 4 is going to be playing catch up with Twitch, whereas Xbox One is going to have a lot of these features, I think, kind of integrated already. I know, we also don't know how Xbox is going to have their picture in picture stuff either. They could make that really awkward and horrible if they do it wrong. Yeah. Because technically, like, all the Skype video stuff is, like, part of that side panel thing. I'm doing this because he literally did this in order to pull it out during yeah, the, yeah. uh... Actually, I think it was... <laughs> in order to pull out the extra panel, and then you can see, like, the cameras and stuff, so... I don't know, that could be an issue in itself, is how they do that. <laughs> Tricks said PS4 stuff is killing them. Hey, we've been getting a lot... The funny thing is, we've been getting a lot more people... Uh, on YouTube that want us to talk specifically more about the PlayStation because we've been so... I'd say we haven't been Xbox heavy, but we've been kind of PC heavy and we'll occasionally mention stuff about Xbox 
and not so much about PlayStation. I think the only time we really talked about PlayStation was when they announced the Ustream stuff, and we were both like, Ustream? What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's gotten to a point now where, like, the two consoles are almost identical to me, and it's just kind of like, I'm indifferent to them entirely. I'd say, like, the only thing that has me leaning towards Xbox is Project Spark, which uh, we we'll can talk about here in a minute. You want to talk about it right now? Sure, we can go right into Project Spark. We can go right into Project Spark since you're interested. I wasn't going to go into the Vita, but Project Spark has us both. It's really cool. Intrigued. It's really cool. Uh, and there's a... Uh, here, I'll go ahead and link this in chat. Is that a video? Yeah, I got a video that I haven't even finished watching yet, so you guys might finish this before I do. Uh, Project Spark level creation demo at Gamescom. 15 minute demo. If you at home on YouTube want to search for it, it's IGN video. It's 15 minutes long, 18 seconds long. So I pull it up, but I no, it's really play. long and yeah, probably I pretty dry. You said it's too I mean, it's it's level creation, right? So it's not like it's super riveting or anything. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so they announced during E3 they're doing a beta. Is it September? Is that right? Uh, I think that's right. September on Xbox or on uh. Windows 8, and then they'll open up like the Xbox beta in next year. So I thought that was kind of interesting because I do remember them uh, now saying it was Windows 8. Does that mean that I have 7, I have to upgrade to 8 and if I want to play this? Or does that just mean where the beta is going to be at first? Beta is on Xbox 8 first. Uh, you'll actually be able to create Windows on anything. Windows so you, or Windows 8, yeah. As I say, Xbox 8. Xbox 8. <laughs> 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 We're ways off on that, unless they decided to go to it. Uh, but yeah, you can actually create on any platform. So you can create on mobile, uh, tablets with Windows, or Windows 8, or Xbox One, and you can actually share your levels between all of them uh, from what they were saying at E3. So, like, realistically, the stuff you create during beta in Xbox 8 will eventually be able to be dropped right into Xbox, I think. That's really interesting. Um, and yeah, to Beater Boy 34 the Project Spark's actually free to play. Uh, they're going to monetize in some unannounced way, but I believe that you'll be able to load up the game and play stuff other people have made for free. Uh, which is probably the biggest appeal to the mass, vast majority of people is being able to play all this stuff. It's basically like a really highly advanced Minecraft, I guess you could say. In the sense that there's going to be a really big user-generated community. Uh, Little Big Planet is probably a better comparison. Yeah, um, I was going to say... I feel but like... Little Big Planet's more uh, restrictive, you know what I mean? Because it's strictly a side-scroller, right? This is yeah, yeah. 3D level creation. Yeah. Uh, the other things they announced was uh, animation stuff with Kinect. Uh, you'll be able to actually animate characters using the Kinect. Uh, and then save really off stuff. Cool. I missed that. I must have missed that. Yeah. So wait a minute. So wait. So it's going to mocap me. Yep. Doing. Uh, 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 uh. It can do. Um, arms, legs, body stuff, and facial stuff. So, like, he, in the example in the video, he was, like, doing an angry pose for a troll, and he was, like, waving his hands like this, and then he, like, even opened up his mouth, and the troll opened up his mouth really big. Uh, so you, like, just record in a steady stream of stuff, and, of course, a lot of that's crap, because it's connect camera connecting to a skeletal mesh of a troll or whatever, so it's, like, head like this, you know, that kind of thing. Right. But you just, like, do a long recording, and then you just go ahead and snip whatever part you want, and then you make that as your animation that saves off. That is incredible. So, like, all you really have to do is just have, like, three seconds of whatever set you I'm actually gonna, want. I'm gonna have an in-house mocap theater? Yeah! Like, how fucking cool is that? I'm, I'm blown away. It's really cool. And then they're also doing a uh, voice. You can talk to the mic, and you can do, like, general modulation stuff. And you can just do voice acting for your game that you made. <laughs> yeah, you could do the evil man voice. <laughs> <laughs> and you literally should be able to drop that right in. So, realistically, there's almost no limits to what you can do at that point, right? If you can do mocap and voice, then with right. the huge game creation features, it seems like you could probably create just about anything. I expect there's going to be really some badass stuff coming out. So, I've got a question for you. Yep. You ready? Will Project Spark dethrone Minecraft? I don't know. I mean, Minecraft's too big with the youngins. But it's possible. What I'm hoping happens is that it's like a... Uh, it's one of those things where like, if kids get into it, they can learn 
programming, essentially. Like, you're learning visual programming. It's not quite the same as typing out code. But it's one of those things where, like, if it's good enough, then kids are like, hey, this is really fun. And then you can just open up a level and see how it's made. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Project Smart on the MLG circuit. <laughs> yeah. <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I mean, like, you could create a shooter in Project Spark that's super competitive. Uh, and then if you happen to be a rich billionaire... Who wants to throw money at MLG to run your game? <laughs> then you could have a chance of being on the MLG circuit. <laughs> but you could easily make a game that's uh, competitive focused, and then uh, sorry, you can make you make a game that's competitive focused, and then make your own community around it. You know what I mean? And then yeah. kind of grow from there, just like the mods like Dota do. Yeah, they do. Uh, I mean, I guess it's more scripting than programming, I guess. But they do some pretty complex stuff. Uh, in terms of being able to do like ray casting, you can set up that kind of stuff. It's not quite programming, I guess, but it's more advanced than design, uh, as a word would say. Uh, level design. I mean, it's not—it's more than level design, design, though. I mean, there's some elements of level design there, obviously, that overlap. And you're so, doing like AI behaviors and that kind of stuff, which is way beyond level very, design. At the very least, you are talking about all-encompassing design. So you have audio audio design now that what you just told me um the mocap stuff i don't know what they really classify that that would be animation and that's more it's more like more beginner's animation because you can't tweak it at all right so that's more art based uh and then um from the programming side if there are if then arguments then it's basic programming i mean beginner language i mean that's that's definitely i'd, I'd say a step in the right direction for if i want to learn game design this is the game i want i need to play yeah, I mean, especially if you just think of kids, like, it's successful enough that I think that, like, 14, 15, 16 year olds can get into it and learn. Yeah. Which is cool. That's, and that's, there's be some cool games. That's what I'm looking forward to the most, is just cool games people make. I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to mess with that, like. Yeah, it uses if then. Uh, they call them when do's uh, for Cody. So, that's, that's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Check the video. It's really cool. I think that uh, you've maybe heightened my... Because I was already... You know, we've been talking about it on and off for... I mean, since it was announced, pretty much. But, you know, we've both been kind of excited for it. But I didn't even know the mocap thing existed. And that's... Well, and my... Ha, ha, ha. I'm giving everyone in there <laughs> the... Ha, 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 ha. They even showed in their uh, little video thing was like a large Zeppelin flying thing crashing out of the ground and like... It was probably composed of a good 40 or 50 parts, like, pieced together uh, to make it. Then they showed it, like, crashing out of the sky, and then a big fireball as it landed, uh, with parts flying everywhere. So, like, it seems pretty limitless. And that was just, like, what their small team could create. Imagine that in the hand of a million people, because it's free to play, you know? Right. All right, so Xbox One, all-encompassing. Uh, there's a couple things that they announced. Uh, I'm going to... To kind of wrap up a couple other games in here too, talking about this uh, towards the end of the show. Uh, Killer Instinct, which is the free-to-play. I mean, if if you've been around for a while and you know fighting games, and you just had an it was a Nintendo 64, you probably know what Killer Instinct is. But uh, the free-to-play version, uh, which is going to be launching with Xbox One, actually announced its uh, uh, pricing model, and I've really been trying to wrap my head around this, but this isn't a free-to-play game to me because free-to-play I mean sure you can play the game against other people with one character but usually in free-to-play games you earn stuff that go to goes towards um, something in game and it doesn't seem like they have that model in there so I can't earn characters it doesn't seem like I only get that one which is Jago uh, and if I want to pay for characters uh, separately, it's five dollars per character. And then, if I want to buy all the characters, you can. There's two different packs. There's a twenty dollar uh, pack, I guess, that includes the initial six characters, uh, plus the two that are coming. I want to say they said March, uh, and it'll include some basic like outfits or whatever. And then there's another forty dollar one that has the same thing: uh, the characters, the modes, which there's no story mode. Uh, the six characters plus more outfits uh, so it's I 
don't really understand if they're going to have a proper free-to-play model in, in terms of the sense that we're kind of used to on PC. Doesn't sound like it. So it's just weird. I I don't like the piecemeal buying of things, especially when it's like five bucks a pop. Yeah, that's. I I won't say that's really expensive, but. Uh, so this this looking at what if you buy all ca eight characters at five, that's forty bucks. If you bought 30, a piecemeal, it'd be forty bucks. Or sorry, eight would be thirty-five dollars because you get the one for free. Oh okay, yeah, that's true. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of like not as hype about Killer Instinct now that they've announced this. I, I probably will spend twenty bucks to get everything, but I can't. I don't see myself spending forty on it because, in addition to that, I'm gonna have to get a new uh, arcade stick because uh, nothing is gonna work with it. So I'm probably gonna be looking at getting the Mac Cats one, unless they release an adapter that actually makes it work with uh, the Xbox One. Then I, I won't have to buy one. It's also the fact they're only doing six characters for what, like four months, five months? Yeah, that's a long time. Six characters is really small. It's a for long a fighting time. Game. That's like unacceptably small for a fighting game. Skullgirls had like twelve, I think, fourteen. And that was What's from a uh, like small indie dev, basically. I I don't know, man. So I mean, the news for Killer Instinct kind of has me like, eh. I was hype about it, and now I'm kind of like. Yeah, I'll get it, but I'm not gonna like it. <laughs> That's gonna how I feel. Just so, get it for free then. Don't don't buy anything. Yeah, not, don't buy anything. Become yeah. a Jago Pro. Yeah, that might be what I have to do. Uh, other Xbox One stuff. Uh, I guess the kind of the I want to say it's major news, but they downscaled the number of units that they're gonna ship uh, for other countries. So they kind of shortened it. I don't know what that means. Uh, Lessened it rather. Um, I don't know. If Doesn't means... matter. USA. Yeah. Let's I mean, go. I feel bad for the other countries, but I don't know who it's going to affect. That it's like this edge. every time a console launches. Uh, shortages. Yeah, shortages. There's going to be. They. They're trying to. I don't. I don't know. It's, I mean, people should expect this at this point. So. I'm not trying to rally behind and be like America's the shit or Team America, fuck yeah or anything like that. That's not what we're trying to do, but. I, I, I am sorry. Now the good thing, uh, fuck yeah. <laughs> the good thing yeah. here is <laughs> the motherfucking day, America. <laughs> fuck yeah. There we go. The other thing is uh, FIFA 14 is free with every Xbox One pre-order in in Europe. Now, I, I imagine this is an EA thing because if I'm not mistaken, there is something going on with Madden. And getting Madden uh, tickets, or Madden season, whatever it is, the Madden season ticket that you can watch on your console if you either pre-order the game or something like that, or buy it. I, I heard this. I have heard no this. idea. So if anyone knows, I, I can't remember offhand because I didn't include it with these notes. Uh, I just didn't have time to find it. But So with FIFA 14, if you, if you uh, pre-order... Your Xbox One in Europe, you're going to get FIFA 14 for free. And I believe there is something very similar with uh, Madden where they're doing some type of deal with, with someone where you get uh, the, the NFL ticket or whatever for free. Um, so I, I really want to find that. And if EA is kind of doing this stuff, maybe we can expect more little goodies like this. Uh, but I thought that was pretty damn cool. I don't know what else they would offer. I mean, NHL, I don't know if the NHL people are going to be like, yeah, can't wait to, sick. <laughs> can't wait to get it. It would be. That was can't a good game. This. It was. It was <laughs> one of the best. Good. It was one of the best. Um, and what's the, they're rebooting NBA Live, which yeah, they, I don't, they, they should get Madden for free. Why don't they get Madden for free? Here in the U.S.? That wouldn't hurt their income any, right? I mean, if Microsoft is going to pay EA money. <laughs> I mean, realistically speaking... That would sell a lot of copies. It would. Uh, but the, the issue that they have every time they do that is that the Madden that comes out on Next Gen is always way Oh, yeah. Shittier it's really bad. I remember. And uh, the the previous version, or the, the older generation consoles version, yeah. so... Yeah. With Madden, it's a PS3 crowd, too, so... Yeah. Oh, that's another thing to, Just, to mention there. But I also gotta give some was, free stuff out. Thought that was worth mentioning. 
Uh, another thing that uh, I saw that crept out was the official launch titles. I think we were kind of guessing this after E3 show. Uh, so I have the full list of games that are coming out. Xbox One official launch titles. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. It's Ubisoft. Battlefield 4. Call of Duty Ghosts. Crimson Dragon. Dead Rising 3. FIFA 14. Fighter Within, which I have some notes on. I'll talk about it here right <laughs> at the end of the show. <laughs> Why you gotta do that laugh? Why can't you just let me I'm sorry, I just was, I was recalling the trailer. <laughs> uh, Forza Motorsport 5. Uh, just Dance 2014. Killer Instinct. Uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Uh, wow, there's a bunch of studios behind that game. Uh, Madden NFL 25. That's going to be terrible. Uh, let's see. Loco Cycle. NBA Live 14. Need for Speed Rivals. Peggle 2. <laughs> Peggle 2. Power Star Golf. Uh, they're really stretching on these because a few of these are arcade titles. Rise, Son of Rome. So uh, I'm going to end on that. Uh, I guess I'm going to end on those two. Um,. Skylanders Swamp Force. That's Swap Force. Oh, it is Swap Force. That's Swap oh, Force. Look like Swamp. <laughs> uh, Watch Dogs. Uh, Zoo Tycoon. Zoo Tycoon is coming out? Hmm. Interesting. Zumba Fitness World Party. <laughs> so those are the official launch titles for Xbox One. <laughs> There's a lot of really awful games there, but... <laughs> This launch lineup is a lot better than the Xbox 360 was. It is significantly better because, and the only reason is because, is Battlefield 4 is on there. For me, uh, that's like, the even reason. then, like. Killer Instinct is on there, which is pretty good. Assassin's Creed 4 is on there. That's Dead probably. Rising? Dead Rising 3 is pretty good, but Dead Rising at the time when it was launched, which was a launch title, it was like nobody knew about it, so it was like, eh, what is this game? Maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't. I remember like launch titles was Call of Duty 2, which was broken. The netcode was broken for like four or five months. Um, oh god, yeah, that was, that's true. It was. Perfect Dark was fun, uh, but that was really the only game anyone played because the rest of them weren't very good. Perfect Dark, and then there was a Forza. Forza. Uh, there was a uh, the game with the uh, yeah Viva Pinata cameo was the one I was thinking of. There was a there was that party game. And Graw. <laughs> Graw. Actually, no, Graw wasn't released. It came out shortly after, I think. What was the name of that party game? Fusion Frenzy? Fusion Frenzy? Was that a launch? I don't think it was. It was a party game that came out. You're probably thinking of Fusion Frenzy, but that was an Xbox game. Was it? Was it an Xbox One? It was a really old Xbox One game. Huh. Interesting. That was an OG Xbox? Was that an OG Xbox launch game? Maybe. Yeah, okay getting my, my titles mixed up. I'm too old. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, two, the two games that we kind of snickered at, well, the one that both of us snickered at was uh, The Fighter Within. <laughs> can you link the trailer to that just so people can... Yeah. <laughs> we should Wait, just watch it. It's pretty short. The, the funny thing is, oh, you, you want to... Yeah, let's watch put it. Put the link in chat and then I'll uh, put there you it go. in the YouTube thing. Alright, put it in the... So we're going to go ahead and watch this trailer. Let me switch to the other view here. The one so one intense. Uh, boom. Uh, let's copy that in there. Search for this. All right. Uh. Did your mic just go out? I don't hear you. I have to push the talk. What? Yeah, lose the volume of this. I want everyone to see. Be quiet. I can call the shots, not let him catch his breath. I have to read his game. Okay, I gotta I gotta pause it real quick. Wait. <laughs> you can't pause it! Keep no, going! The, the dude in the business suit took off his suit and he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 I'm good. 
Just ruin the story. I never take my eyes off my opponent. This round is mine. I'm untouchable. I am a fighter. I can't fight. Fighting with your friends just got real. So did anybody catch? Did anybody catch that he was like whispering? He was like the fight <laughs> is real. Is that going? Just imagine people getting mad and tight fall and challenging each other to fighter within. <laughs> hey you, one v one me, fighter within. <laughs> yeah, 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 wait, wait, wait. Can you, yeah, somebody rages on, you whoop somebody's ass in Titanfall. They're like, fuck this, boot up fucking fighter within, I'm taking your ass out, bitch. Oh, Come on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's possible to make a trailer for a Kinect game that doesn't look corny as shit. Like, I don't think it's possible. I think that's what we've learned over the past four or five years, is that it's not possible to make a Kinect game trailer without looking fucking stupid. Wait, but I can't get over. You guys need to rewatch that. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put the link in chat. You guys gotta listen to the dude whispering. He's whispering. <laughs> How can you be hype as a con like a an announcer, a fighting announcer, and he's whispering? The fight. The fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. So yeah, that's that's the fighter within. That's the, the launch title. And then the other one uh, that uh, I think we were kind of ragging on was Rise, Son of Rome, because of the uh, the fight sequences. I switched the camera back. Yeah, I, IGN did a pretty nice article on it that says that it's a lot better than what was shown. Um, unfortunately, I didn't put the link in, in our notes. But uh, if you guys are interested in check, kind of checking that out, I probably, I'll probably rent that game, to be honest. That's what I feel like that's going to be. It's going to be a rental for me. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it for the show. So, hope you guys enjoyed this kind of wrapping it up. That's, oh, uh, Splinter Cell. It's really good. I recommend playing it. I'm going to be streaming here, so really, <laughs> on Splinter yeah. Cell. Uh, as, soon as, he, as soon as we get done with the show, I'm actually uploading this to YouTube so all of you guys can see. And then I'm going to go pick up uh, Splinter Cell, and then I'll be on probably streaming as well. And uh, what would what you say the streak we're going for is? 100 wins? I'm going for 100 in 2v2. Uh, I'm not counting the 4v4 stuff. What sucks okay. is there's no ranked. It's just fucking quick match. So, like, it kind of kills the legitimacy of it, right? Oh, um, that's But I'm, st I'm, st I'm still going for it. Okay. All right. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Um, it's fun, though. It's a really fun game. You want to go ahead and put your Twitch channel in the, in the yeah. chat? Yeah www.twitch.tv slash skies in so yeah we'll be streaming probably a little bit tonight uh, again I'm going to run and go pick up the game I highly recommend uh, you guys checking out the stream if you're interested or not interested in the game this is this is what uh, Carrington and I refer to Carrington is my brother for those of you guys that don't know as the gray period in games because it's like the summer there's nothing now and so like this is when you'll see us play the most random games unless we're playing something competitive so i've been like marvel heroes got payday 2 now we're going to play splinter cell for a little bit i believe 2008 which was the last time we weren't playing gears we all played monday night combat yeah my, that was, was so a, fun it was a fantastic game i wish we so had gotten it out three months earlier that way we could have played it all summer and yep. wrecked all of the tournaments there because uh, it was really fun uh so uh, let's wrap it up with a couple questions and then we'll uh, say our goodbyes. Skyzen deserves a Twitch TV face. I agree. Spies <laughs> versus Mercs good? Yes. What about Dying Light? Wasn't that a... 
That was this. That was the zombie game. Yeah. Uh, from uh, yeah, I saw the video. It looks okay. It still looks like a Techland game, which isn't a compliment. Oh crap! I'm still on this view. Yeah, Super MNC. I wasn't a fan of, but MNC was really fun. Yeah, that's what I was asking if you want to. Yeah. Uh, Q and A. I haven't followed any Pokemon information since Yellow, so I'm not sure. If you want to talk about Pokemon Red, Blue, I'm all there. I don't actually talk about Pokemon that much. I used to, I used to play, yeah, Red, Blue. Red, Blue, Yellow, and then Pinball. And the card game. Pinball was the shit, though. Oh, and Snap? Remember Pokemon Snap? Pokemon Snap. On, um, Xbox, or Xbox, on Nintendo 64. Yeah, and there was Stadium too, Pokemon Stadium. I was all over that shit. Yeah, I played that too. That was expensive as hell too. I remember that because you had to get the uh, memory thing or the Rumble thing. I can't remember what the hell it was. The attachment. Uh, Hearthstone. Colin, you yes. were watching a stream I was watching, this past weekend. I watched probably about six hours of stream this week of Hearthstone beta. It looks really good, and I'm upset that I'm not in the beta. Why don't you contact the devs? For Blizzard? Yeah, good luck with that. Come on, dude, just do it. Yeah, I don't think I know anybody from Blizzard. I, I don't know anyone from Blizzard at all. I Actually, guess. I didn't, I know customer service reps. <laughs> Maybe talk to Andy, <laughs> see if he has any contacts. Uh, <laughs> no, usually you just talk to like someone like, like here's an example: the Infinity or Infinite Crisis beta. Walter knows a guy that used to work at Edge and now works for that studio. So I was like, hey, can you contact such and such to get me into the beta? That was really easy to get into anyways, though. I'm just, so it didn't no, matter. no, 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 not at the time that I asked. Hearthstone is exclusive. Hearthstone is uh, top streamers and people from Blizzard. We're, we're top streamers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're the most consistent on Tuesdays. <laughs> on Tuesdays? <laughs> most consistent between 8 and 9 on Tuesdays. <laughs> Uh, I was always on Squirrel. Oh yeah, Division. Did you see the tablet thing? Yeah, I mean... Looks okay. Uh, I'm not going to be playing it that way. They did oh, announce yeah. it's on PC, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, I I really want to talk more about The Division. Um, you know, we mentioned at the very beginning of the show, just talking about the graphic fidelity of it compared to Titanfall. Uh, it is on our high list, at our top list, top tier list of games for next gen, but... The game's not coming out for a while. What, I want more winter? info. Like I just want more info. That's yeah. the big thing. Winter 2014, I think, is when it's scheduled. So. Nate Shot gets more viewers streaming himself eating Cheerios. Yeah, he does. <laughs> it's Call of Duty, man. All those dudes. I want Destiny Xbox One console bundle. Not uh, happening. That'd be cool, though. It would. They're also pushing more for PlayStation, so that's extra not going to happen. Which is kind of surprising. Kind of. Maybe not. Maybe not, because Bungie was wrapped up with Microsoft for so long. Maybe they're like, well, we're done. Why Favorite Bungie? video game soundtrack? Wild Arms. Easily. Okay, you should Wild play some Wild Arms to play us out. Wild Arms. Arms was pretty good. You can put it in the YouTube thing, can't you? Yeah, I mean, you'll hear it though, right? Uh, I don't know what it does. You made the chat, so you should be able to control right, that on. as well. I gotta download the app. Shit. There we go. I added it to the playlist. Okay. So that's what we're riding out on? That's what we're riding out on. Off into the sunset. Right. Probably one of my favorite video game songs of all time. Sam. Uh, I didn't, uh, let me think of a soundtrack that I really liked. Probably one of the Grand Theft Autos. Well, uh, that's the same count. What do you mean it doesn't count? It's a compilation of songs more so than it is a soundtrack. I don't care. <laughs> you just picked the cop-out answer. I'm just saying. That's not a cop-out answer. It's a cop-out answer. That's the one where I was bobbing my head the most. Final Fantasy is, uh, 7 was pretty good. Um... There's uh, this game called Skies of Arcadia back on uh, the, the Dreamcast. I really like that soundtrack. 
Yeah. So, See, they so agree. It's a cop-out answer? answer. Okay, I just gave you two more legit, legitimate. <laughs> two more legitimate. Skies of Arcadia. Okay. Dreamcast. Final Fantasy VII. Good. Okay. PlayStation. That's fine. Your first answer was a cop out. The same. No, it wasn't. I had the bells. I was bobbing my head like. Then <laughs> they switch stations. Be like, yeah. Cop out. No. All right. So is that it? We good? Yeah. Let's let's go place a split or so. Let's ride out. I'm about let's to ride us out into the sunset. Okay. Let's. Where's it at? Video. Fighter within. Well, no. That's all I see. Hold on. Wild arms into the wilderness. In the playlist. I don't see it. What? Yeah, I just put it to the top. Where? Oh, here. Maybe save playlist. We can't ride out if you don't have it right. Why don't no, you just I, put the link in the chat? We you put it there. Oh, here it is. There it is. Okay. Ride us out.